Mike, tell us about the event tonight. The event is to bring awareness uh, on bullying and uh, you know get the word out that uh, it affects the lives and it's become an epidemic. Do you have any statistics on how many children are bullied? About 58 percent uh, of the children uh, are bullied today in one way or the other. And what constitutes bullying? A bully is uh, is an uh, unequal uh, amount of power. It's a power distribution problem where somebody has more power over somebody else and uses that power disappropriately against another person. And what kind of effect on a child does bullying have? Well, uh, you know, the, the effects can be everything from just uh, demoralization uh, to uh, physical effects, but it certainly help, uh, hurts their self-esteem. It, it hurts, uh, you know, it could, it, it could be shown in some of the uh, academics that, that uh, uh, you know, they could fail in school, it could, it could bother them, their attendance. You know, they don't want to be involved with the, any of the programs because of the uh, bullying that's taken place. What about the longer term sort of psychological effects? I've, uh, in my experience, I've, I've talked to uh, elderly people, in, you know, in the 60s and 70s who can remember being bullied when they were in school. So this, there are lasting effects that take place that, that can affect someone's for the rest of their life. And uh, there's a, a new term actually today called bully side. Um, you know, children are taking their lives today because of the horrendous amount of, of pain that they feel and uh, disgust sometimes that they, get, that they get from bullying that they don't see any way out, that they actually take their own lives. What kind of things can be done to prevent bullying or to treat it once it's happened? I think number one is to become aware that it's taking place, that we have to admit that it's happening. Uh, number two, once we admit and we acknowledge that it's taking place, uh, th you, you have the bully, you have the person being bullied, but you also have uh, the people that are bystanders that are watching this take place. We need to affect and get in, in the bystanders involved in saying that this is a wrong, you know. Uh, if uh, one person can come in and say, you know, we're not going to stand for that in this school. This is our school. We're going to take control of what happens here um, and, be, and create a positive environment for that person. Also with the bully, you know, bullies have been throughout years and years have been, uh, you know, sent to detention. Uh, there's always been a negative consequence. You know, if we can do something that's a positive reinforcement rather than giving them detention, then the bully can actually learn from the behavior that they're conducting. What are some of the events and uh, displays and booths that are here today? Oh, we have Bikers Against Bullying right over here. Uh, we have uh, the JD Foundation, which is right over here, uh, which is a, uh, a suicide awareness program. These are the three uh, programs, along with Keeping Kids Safe, that this is going to benefit today. We have uh, great entertainment uh, from national recording artists, uh, Jillian Jensen from The X Factor, uh, Shannon Selig from uh, North Yarmouth, who lives in Nashville now, uh, the uh, CEO of uh, the comic book uh, Archie is here. And so everybody's come together like uh, communities ought to uh, for a common goal. If people want more information about your program, where can they go? go. Come to uh, on our website, uh, www.keepingkidssafe.us, and uh, our webpage is there. We have uh, email uh, and a uh, whole bio on uh, uh, myself and uh, uh, our founder, Mike O'Neill. I'm screaming inside, trying to hide that I'm crying. Shannon, why did you get involved in the bullying issue? Well, I was bullied as a, a teenager, and I feel it's very important to teach others that 
you can be different, you can be unique, you can be perfectly imperfect and love yourself and there's no need to knock others down to feel better about yourself. And so I hope to teach people that, you know, they can love themselves and love others as well. And you teach them through your music? I do. I teach them through my music and through my words, and but mostly through my actions. You know, I try to live by the golden rule of do unto others as you would have them do unto you, and I try and show that as much as possible. What do you hear when you talk to kids about who've been bullied? Mostly it's, you know, it's the whole click issue. I don't fit in with them. You know, I, I, you know, I want to be a part of that group, the cool kid group, and it genuinely seems to be the kids who, who have special talents or who excel, who, who strive for something greater. They, they tend to be singled out and, you know, and I really want to show them that that's a great thing. You know, being different is a wonderful thing and, and I hope that they can appreciate that and realize that, you know, your, your flaws aren't necessarily flaws and that your, your greatest attributes can be highlighted and, and loved. Is that what perfectly imperfect means? Perfectly imperfect means that because I tell people I am so perfectly imperfect, mostly imperfect, and I've learned to accept and love my flaws because there are some things in this life you can't change and you need to accept that and, and love yourself despite it. You know, love the little flaws that other people point out because that's who you are and you can't change it. And so that's why I named my album Perfectly Imperfect to highlight that and express that, you know, we're all different and flawless in every single way. Do you see uh, kids who have been bullied as having some hope for the future? I do. I definitely do. I think there is, you know, there's a big movement going on in the anti-bullying effort, and, and I think it, all it takes is, is courage to know that you're not alone, and it gets better. You know, the real world and life doesn't really begin until you graduate high school. You know, I've, I found that, and, you know, you have fun as a kid, and everything's great, and then, you know, you may be bullied, and you go through some hardships, but you don't really find yourself until after all of that, and, you know, you kind of need to go through some of that character-building stuff and find yourself to get there, and I hope that they can see that and and, and realize that, you know, life only gets better, you know, later on. Representative Morrison, you sponsored an anti-bullying bill. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, my second term in the House two years ago, I sponsored LD 1237, an act to prevent bullying and cyberbullying in schools. This bill was designed to change the law a little bit and beef it up. Uh, there was current statute in, in main law that defined bullying, but I wanted to take it to the next level with cyberbullying and so forth and update the current policy and to make sure that our schools were implementing the policies that were passed years ago. So my bill took a little while to pass. It took a whole term to work it itself out, and now it's become law. And as of today, is in schools and school boards throughout the state are trying to implement that policy. What were some of the factors that caused you to write the bill? What I saw was the situation getting worse. Bullying was getting was excessively getting worse over time. Over it was cyberbullying. I notice that every child has a has a cell phone now. They have social media. They have laptops. So now that the tools are, are a lot more, the students have more tools. I knew that this situation was getting worse, not better. And I knew that I, some students were afraid to go to school for the fear of their bully. Some students were just afraid to get a quality education and there was a t they were tormented. And I knew that I had to make a difference, and I knew that this cause was not gonna be just about me, it was gonna be about bringing everyone together and changing the conversation. So I was tr I'm glad to start it, but I wanted to make sure that we casted a wider net and talked to all kinds of people, school administrators, people like here we are, here we tonight with Betty Reynolds and what she's doing, and all kinds of people that are gonna be, take a stand against this and change the conversations and change the dynamic. Mike, what are some of the things that kids can be taught in school to prevent bullying? What we teach is we empower the children to like themselves and to say, you know, listen, what you're going through right now, if you're being bullied, is, is hell. And I, and I totally understand that. But when you get to be 30, 40 years old, you're gonna look back in time and you're gonna forget about this. And for the people that are being bullied, what we teach the kids is, listen, when you graduate, it's over. The bullying stops. And for the bullies, when you go to the real world, you know, you're not gonna get a job if you're a bully. People don't care about if you've played sports. They don't care what kind of club you were on. They care of a good person that you are and how you, and how you interact with people and, and your, how sincere you are. And that's the key to, to being successful in life. We teach the kids that. 
What about educating parents? Is there a component to that as well? Yes, there is. Unfortunately, right now, the parents, you know, some parents are in denial. Uh, we, we go into a school system, we'll teach uh, a program, and the parents are saying, well, my kid doesn't do that. Uh, you know, just because he's maybe popular and he plays sports, uh, they do bully. Uh, and it's happening in every school system. So we need to educate the parents the signs to look for for being bullies. If your kid's coming home withdrawn, uh, doesn't want to participate in, in the family activities, or he's, he's you know, a, a female who starts wearing dark makeup and dark clothes and, and really reserve themselves and not talking, that's a sign that there's something going on, and we need to react on that. And what can parents do in that situation? Should they start talking to the child? Should they talk to the school? What happens? The parents, first of all, need to bring it to the school's attention, absolutely. And they also got to be positive, and they got to get involved in their child's life and be a positive uh, influence in their child's life. Tell them that they're wonderful and that they're okay. It doesn't matter if you're fat. It doesn't matter what kind of society you come from, black, white, purple. It doesn't matter. You need to love your child and teach that uh, to love. And that's the key here. We need to teach the kids that they're okay. They don't have to get down to a size small because Abercrombie's not offering, you know, extra large clothes. It's not, it's okay to be extra large. It's okay to love yourself for who you are. When you work with the children and they sort of go through this process, what kind of change do you see? Well, when, when they go through our program and, and they see our videos that we play and, and we, we have a really in-your-face program. We, 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 we teach with the videos and also teach with the PowerPoint. The videos of children talking situations they're being, they were in, excuse me, and we also, at the end, we end with something very positive. Um, and the kids empower that and they look and they say, yeah, we want to be like that at the end, the very uh, positive video. We want our school to be like that. So and I should raise the hands and, and I ask them, don't you want to have a school like that? And they all say yes. Yeah. So hopefully they walk away with something positive. So if they see someone sitting on the side who looks depressed, go over there and say hi to them. Because you, they could be thinking about committing suicide later on that night. We don't, you don't know. So go and be a positive role model and say hi. It's okay.